everyone. Uh, my name is Raziel. And so far you've heard about all the cool technology that we've been building and a lot of references to Python and server. Uh, but next I will give you an update on Python support for on-device machine learning, aka mobile. Uh, first I'll give a quick recap on why on-device ML matters. Uh, then I'll talk about how we see the space uh, growing and evolving, the changing needs. Uh, then I will cover is this well supported so far and how we're thinking about evolving Python to uh, support this uh, space better. Okay, on device ML is important because it provides some capabilities that a uh, server does not, uh, does not have, right? Uh, perhaps an obvious one is offline. So that means that applications and products do not rely on a connection. So there is more resilience to, to those type of connectivity issues. Furthermore, this can give a an, an level of efficiency versus having a direct connection to a server. So that translates in being able to have long running AI interactions. For example, this is how assistant uh, wake works uh, typically work. Uh, this efficiency also translates into reduced latency, so enables products that really need a lot of interactivity. Uh, also, by having the uh, machine learning running on device, you can take advantage of the data that is available on these uh, devices uh, to do this type of multimodal uh, tasks. And last but not least is a privacy enhancing technology because it allows the data to remain on device. So if you think about it, on-device machine learning uh, allows new type of products uh, that will not be possible if you had uh, reliance on server-side execution. In PyTorch, we've been supporting on-device machine learning for some time now. We released PyTorch uh, mobile three years ago. Uh, since then, we've been doing constant uh, performance upgrades. And uh, lastly, we push a significant binary size reduction uh, and on the runtime. Uh, we use it very successfully at, at Meta. Uh, it's used across many applications like Messenger, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Spark AR, for example. Uh, this is about like 50 models across these applications that daily perform about 70 billion inferences. Uh, however, the, the future for on-device ML is, is rapidly changing. I think one of... Uh, you know, a, a reflection of the success of this space is how fast and how much growth we've seen. And just to give a sense of the scale, uh, an estimate of the value of AI in general is already measured in the trillions. And on the other hand, the investment on edge computing is very large already and growing. And we are not talking just about mobile phones and apps. We're talking a wide variety of products on a wide variety of devices and applications. This, however, means a growing set of challenges. Uh, we obviously have more software platforms. It's not just about Android and iOS. Uh, as you saw on the previous slide, there is a lot more devices. Uh, this translates in hardware heterogeneity uh, that the framework needs to support optimization and targeting for, uh, for example, like doing mixed compute uh, execution where you want a model, a program, to be able to partially execute across different compute units, for example, uh, running partially on a DSP, partially on an MPU. Uh, there is more metrics to optimize. Uh, it's not just about performance. Uh, for example, power consumption is a very important one for edge computing. And we've seen also a, a, a increased uh, model variety and complexity and also very important and interesting is the number and variety of experts involved has grown, and this process of bringing research to production has become much more interactive. Uh, how is the future well supported? Um, well, if you see the solutions uh, out there, a lot of them have been focused on creating uh, narrow solutions, and this forces users into abstractions and semantics that were not those that they used when they created the program in the first place, when they authored the model, and, and then now they have to grasp with, with another set of, of solutions. This has some unfortunate consequences. Um, it increases friction, because developers now need to think about what is the programming model, the programming paradigm that I need to follow in order to author a program, 
a model that can successfully be deployed across different devices, and it also fragments the ecosystem. Uh, for users, because they have to learn a different framework, um, a lot of the concepts may be similar, but they're fundamentally different. And for framework developers, there is a lot more surface to cover. Uh, in Pytorch, we've always been very adamant about keeping semantic consistency across the stack, but we need to scale it up to this growing set of devices. Our hypothesis is that we need to power an ecosystem where, where both uh, narrow solutions but also general ones can be built on a common uh, platform uh, within PyTorch. So with that in mind, we're building a new software stack for on-device machine learning that is anchored in four principles. The first one is we want to maintain PyTorch authoring semantics. Uh, basically, we want to extract a representation that is non-Pythonic, that is easier to lower and optimize. But we want to make this process as easy and clear so the programming model is easy and intuitive so users know what, what will be possible to be captured and what won't. Um, you saw a previous talk about exports. So we, this is the other key thing. We want to preserve consistency across all the PyTorch stack. And we are doing it by reusing all the components that you heard uh, today. The second principle is we want to embrace uh, user extensibility. So this means that we want to allow users to customize a program, and we want to do it via well-defined entry points. And not only that, but these entry points need to have a clear and verifiable contract, because we want to make sure that the semantics of the program are maintained even as optimizations happen through, through, through the stack in order to target to a particular device. Now, we obviously want to support out-of-the-box components right away. Uh, one of them, very important, is a portable, small, efficient runtime that can be deployed across a wide variety of devices, including microcontrollers. And obviously, current libraries to execute these programs, uh, with some optimized for common, common hardware. And the same goes for supporting compiler-based backends that is typically the way to delegate execution to accelerators. The important part is that we want to build this on the same entry points uh, that anybody can use to develop their own solutions. Um, and also enabled by these previous three principles, we will offer APIs and tools to improve uh, developer productivity. So, a developer SDK that allows you to do profiling, debugging. But not only that, we're also thinking about how do we do this um, and provide this information and these tools that is actionable. And one way to do this is we want to be able to bring this uh, information as close uh, as possible to the, to the author program. So if you see a profile information debugging, you want to see it not in another abstraction, but in terms of the, the code that you author in the first place. And we will see this new ecosystem with documentation, tutorials, examples. Um, now, this is not built overnight. We're working hard to get this uh, ready. So you can expect a better release of this new software stack uh, late summer next year. Uh, so please stay tuned. Thank you.